everybody, the Power BI February 2023 update just came out yesterday, and it's getting a lot of discussion online. There's not really an earth-shattering upgrade present in this one, um, there, but there are a lot of nice little features and just things that kind of polish the use of Power BI. Um, I particularly like the new uh, the new linear regression DAX functions. I'll be making a video about those soon. But one of the ones I want to talk about was one that a lot of people really seem to like, which is conditional formatting based on string fields. And there's there's nothing wrong with it, but it's actually been something you've been able to do for two years and do in a much more powerful way. So I'm going to show you how this upgrade works, and then I'm going to show you what I think is a far, far better way to do this. So let's let's hop into Power BI, and I'll show you how this works. Um, so basically what I've got is just a... Um, a sample data set from a gourmet food store, and it's got um, average sales for different categories of project. This is the the improved hierarchical axis from last year. Um, so we've got five categories of products and then a bunch of product ID numbers. And what you can do now is you can, you can go into um, the visual and then go to conditional formatting for columns. And what you can do is if you click on the FX, and then you go into rules, what you'll see is if we click here on the uh, categories and the category name, what you'll now see is a number of options in summarization related to text. And then here, kind of a whole bunch of conditionals we have for text. And let's just keep it as is, so equals. And then in this case, let's say we want to highlight um, confections. And if it's confections, we want to highlight it with this red color. And we just click OK. And then it highlights the, the category name. Um, and so that's nice. You know, that, that's, that's a useful function. But there's a much, much better way to do this that's been available for a long time. And let's, let's step into it kind of step back into the um, the unformatted version and take a look at what we can do with field value. So let's let's go through and instead of going through rules, let's go through field value because field value makes Power BI play by your rules instead of you playing by it. And so if we go in here and click on FX, and now instead of going to rules, if we go to um, field value, and then we base this on a measure that I've got called um, conditional formatting by category. What we're going to see is we're going to see a bunch of things happen at once. And let's click on OK. And there's, there's the power of, of field value. And let me show you what this is doing. So this now, if we go to key measures and the CF category, this is providing our rules for how we want Power BI to conditionally format. And we're doing this through a switch true statement. And there's, there's really six primary advantages I can see to doing it this way. One of which is, as you see, we can format multiple categories at once. Instead of having to go through rule by rule, we can just do one measure and that, that solves everything. The other thing we can do is we can use named colors. So um, I did a post a while back with a cheat sheet that's got um that's got i think about 160 or 70 different um named colors that power bi recognizes and we can use them here so instead of having you know hex codes or you know for rules where you're just limited to the the colors in the drop down without going in and changing each individual hex code we can just use these named colors and one of the nice things we can also do is we can just, without ever having to go back into conditional formatting. So let's say, you know, let's say we accept these and we've got our, we've got our colors by, by category. What we can do is if we want to change this, like let's say instead of this, this color blue, we want to change it to like a navy blue. Um, so we go here and what we've got is we've got Dodger blue and let's just change that to navy. And then we just hit enter and boom, it just changes it. So no need to go back and conditionally format. And we can change this again. So let's say we now want to change navy to lavender. We can just click on that. 
and it just updates dynamically, automatically based on the color name. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, as I said, we don't have to go back into conditional formatting. We can just do this straight out of our, out of our measure table. Um, there's a, some other really cool things we can do here. So first of all, we can use all the logic that relates to strings. So in this case, we've got selected value of category name equals beverages, and we apply coral to that. We can do a contained string. So we're looking for a substring here of just ERE, and that picks up serial. Um, we can do a left, which is the equivalent of starts with. We can do a right, which is the equivalent of ends with. So we can do any sort of text operator that DAX can handle. The other thing we can do is we can put complex conditions in here. And this is, this is really where switch true shines because it doesn't have to be like all text or um, all you know, numeric. It can be a mix of all different things. And we can branch measures here so we can put branch measures. We can also branch parameters in here. And let me show you how this works. So what we've got here is let's say, let's say what we want to do is do dynamic highlighting of outliers. And we've got a, a complex outlier measure here. So identify outliers. So what I've got here is basically just calculating the, the average sales by category, the average sales by product ID, and then um, dividing them and then setting a threshold by parameter um, so that what we can do is we can we can take that complex logic and say in this case we want to we want to look at um, conditionally formatting product ids where the average sales are three times the average or more for that category and what we can do is we can then through parameterization and if we look here in the conditional formatting what we've got here is the outlier threshold value, which is harvesting from that slide from that slider. And so what we can do is we can take this and we can make this more sensitive. So we're picking up fewer outliers, or we can make it less sensitive, and we're picking up more outliers. And what we can also do is we can dynamically change through branch measures the color of this. So if we think the black is kind of putting too much prominence on the outlier. What we can do is we can we can make it silver, damp it down a little bit. Um, even this Gainsborough, I think, is a lighter color gray, and um, that makes it less prominent. And again, that's just through a branch measure in our um, in our outlier detection algorithm. So that is, in my mind, you know, kind of the six advantages: the multiple categories at once, the use of named colors. The ability to change without going back into um, conditional formatting, um, the use of nested measures, the use of parameters, and the use of complex logic. Um, so that is really why I think in all cases, um, even if you're not doing something nearly this complex, that field value is always going to be a better option than rules. You can always mimic the simplicity of rules in field value. And I think it's also. Um, much more transparent in the documentation. So without having to go into the conditional formatting panel, you can just look in your measures and also send those out in documentation so that somebody looking at your documentation can see exactly the logic you're using in your conditional formatting, which is something you can't do in the, um, in the panel. So I hope you found that helpful. Maybe provide some food for thought in how you do your conditional formatting going forward. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.